bless faith and freedom. I'm going to commit a radical act. I'm going to speak the truth. America is great. Christopher Columbus discovering America was a good thing. George Washington was an American hero. Thomas Jefferson was an American hero. Abraham Lincoln was an American hero. Our founding fathers were extraordinary patriots. America has been a force for good in the world. We should stand for our national anthem. Police officers keep us safe. Marriage is a holy covenant before God. An unborn child is a child. Children do best when they're raised by a mother and a father. Israel is our friend. The Wuhan virus came from Wuhan. And there is a difference between boys and girls. I want you to pause and think for a second that just a few years ago, every one of those statements would have been utterly uncontroversial and blazingly obvious even to the most dim-witted among us. <laughs> and today we're at a moment where saying those words can get you canceled. Saying those words can get you fired. Saying those words can get you erased. And I'm here today with two very simple messages. Number one, we need to defend America. And number two, a word of optimism. Revival is coming. We are seeing an assault on our nation, an assault at a level never before in the history of this country. All of the foundations of this country are under assault. The Constitution is under assault. The Bill of Rights is under assault. Our founding fathers are under assault. The eternal principles America was built on are being attacked each and every day. This assault is relentless, and the left is like the Terminator. They never sleep. They never stop. Their soulless have no heart, no brain, and red eyes. <laughs> but I'm just describing them. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Their trick, they want to convince the men and women here, they want to convince patriots across the country, that when you think obvious truths, that you're alone, that nobody else thinks that. They control the airwaves, they control media, they control journalism, they control education, they control Hollywood, they control culture, and they try to tell us nobody else thinks like you do. Just go back home, retreat, hide, give up on America. We are ascendant. You know, there's a line in the movie, The Usual Suspects, which is the greatest trick the devil ever played, 
was to convince the world he didn't exist. There's a corollary to that, which is the greatest trick the left has ever played is to convince millions of Americans we are alone and that the American people aren't with us. What they're doing is wrong and it's built on a pile of lies. You know, Andrew Breitbart once said, politics is downstream from culture. Well, today, politics is culture. If you want to hold on to your faith, if you want to hold on to your freedom, then you have to rise and answer the call to defend America. Now, as I was preparing these remarks backstage, I initially had a call to arms. And one of the folks on my team said, no, 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 I'm sorry, you can't say that. No, 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 in this environment, the numbskulls in the media, by which I mean all of them, the numbskulls in the media will say, see, it, it's a call to, to, to violent action. No, you nimwits. Because you need help spelling it out. Let me help you on this. A call to rhetorical arms, a call to be prayer warriors, a call to organize, a call to mobilize, and a call to go to the ballot box and use your arms to vote the bums out. The men and women here are powerful. The men and women here are powerful, but I'll tell you, if you look across this nation, there are over 90 million evangelical Christians in the United States. Fewer than half of them vote. The church is asleep. Many of y'all know my dad, Rafael Cruz. He's a pastor. I'm the shy and soft-spoken one in the family. <laughs> but you know, my father has a ministry where he preaches to pastors all across the country, and he's got at times a hard message where he says, you look at 62 million unborn children who've lost their lives. You look at our values being stripped away, and the, the message my father preaches is no one bears more responsibility for that than the pastors in America. Than the pastors in America who hide behind the pulpit. Who say, well, you know, the Bible doesn't say anything about life. Bible doesn't say anything about marriage. Bible doesn't say anything about race or freedom or equality. Too many pastors who say, you know, if, if I actually preach the gospel, there are going to be some people unhappy in the crowd. They're going to get up and leave. And let me tell you right now, if we are going to defeat the woke assault, then all of us need to wake up. The slumbering church needs to wake up. The patriots across America who love our nation, who reject the stinking pile of lies that the left is selling. We need to wake up, we need to energize, we need to engage, and let me tell you, we can win and we will win. Earlier this year in South Lake, Texas, a suburb of Dallas, South Lake School Board had implemented a curriculum where they were teaching critical race theory. Now, what is critical race theory? You know, I had a, just this week on Capitol Hill, I had a reporter run up to me. He thought, he thought he had a gotcha. He said, hey, what's critical race theory? Apparently, he thought I would turn to him and say, gosh, I have no idea. I think it's really bad, but I just don't know what it is, you know, because, you know, conservatives are morons and we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> like, he really did think this was such a boy. He really got you there. 
And I explained to him, I said, well, it's a theory that derives from Marxism. Karl Marx viewed the entire world as a conflict between classes, between the owners of capital and the working men and women, the proletariat, a fundamental battle in society. Critical race theory takes that same Marxist concept, except it replaces class with race. And it says all of America and all of the world is a battle between the races. Critical race theory says every white person is a racist. Critical race theory says America is fundamentally racist and irredeemably racist. Critical race theory seeks to turn us against each other, and if someone has a different color skin, seeks to make us hate that person. And let me tell you right now, critical race theory is bigoted, it is a lie, and it is every bit as racist as the Klansmen in white sheets. As a Christian and as an American, I love my brothers and sister, whatever skin color you are, whatever ethnicity you are, whatever faith you are, whatever creed you are, we are commanded to love, period, the end. And those who would divide us, those who would spread lies, it is evil. It is exactly that it is evil, but I tell you what, the school board did it, and it would be easy to say, well, Oh, what's going on with America? We're just going to have to retreat home and be sad. I'll tell you what happened. The residents of South Lake, they rose up and they voted and they tripled the turnout for the school board election and they threw those school board members out by a vote of 70 to 30. Now you might say, well, look, That's South Lake. South Lake's a pretty conservative community. That may not be the rest of the country. All right, let's take Austin, Texas. So Austin is frequently referred to as the blueberry in a bowl of tomato soup. (laughs) Austin's motto is keep Austin weird. There's a famous beach on Lake Travis called Hippie Hollow that is a nude beach. You ever notice the wrong people go to nude beaches? You're just like, oh, please, no. Come on, no, nobody needs to see that. (laughs) Austin, Texas. The numbskull mayor, the numbskull city council, they decided it was a great idea to allow homeless people to set up tents and camp anywhere they want in the city of Austin. So you started to see homeless people. You started to see people who were drunk. You started to see drug addicts. You started to see people with with, with mental illnesses camping out all over the place. The University of Texas, no bastion of conservatism, their police department wrote to the city and said, hey, this is really dangerous for our students. Well, you know what just happened? We just had a referendum in Austin, Texas, and the reliably liberal Democrats in Austin, Texas voted 60-40 to end the law allowing homeless people to to camp out all across the city. Common sense is there, it is real. And the American people are with us. We've just got to see it. We've got to believe it. Look, it's easy right now to turn on the TV and be discouraged, be demoralized. I got to tell you, every time I see some extreme radical thing happening in Washington, which would be every minute of every day right now, (laughs) I am encouraged because there's a natural pendulum to politics and the further and further and further crazy left they go, the more the American people are gonna bring us back and pull this country back from the edge of the cliff. It took Jimmy Carter to give us Ronald Reagan. Joe Biden is Jimmy Carter 2.0. And I'm here to tell you revival is coming. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 5 says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I'm here to tell you morning is coming. We're going to win in 2022 and retire Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. (laughs) 
and then we're going to win in 2024 and send Joe Biden and Kamala Harris a one-way ticket down finally to our southern border. And let me close with a simple story. It's a story that my dad has preached from the pulpit many times. He's preached it concerning salvation, but it is every bit as applicable to fighting for our nation. It's a story of a tightrope walker. Tightrope walker extends a tightrope across a gigantic waterfall. Crowd gathers to see him. The tightrope walker asks the crowd, he says, how many of you believe I can walk across this tightrope and back? The crowd cheers. And he does it. Tightrope walker then pulls out a wheelbarrow, says, how many of you believe I can walk across this, wheelbarrow, this tightrope and back, push it a wheelbarrow? Crowd cheers, and he does it. He says, how many of you believe I can walk across this tightrope and back with two 100-pound bags of sand in the wheelbarrow? Crowd cheers, and he does it. He says, how many of you believe I can walk across this tightrope and back with a man in the wheelbarrow? The crowd cheers, and he turns to a man in the front row. He says, get in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> it's one thing to sit there quietly and do a golf clap. It's one thing to say, oh, I believe. I believe we'll save our nation. It's another thing to get in the wheelbarrow. It's another thing to be fully committed with every ounce you've got to begin the morning on your knees on prayer for our nation, to spend the days standing and speaking and speaking the truth that America is great, that freedom matters, that faith matters, that we will take our nation back, that we will defend America. And revival is coming. God bless America. Revival is coming.